last few months that I I thought I'm going to just have to do quick highlights and then refer to you all to the newsletter because there there's just so much to fit in. Um, I think the summer always used to be a period when things quietened down a little bit, but that doesn't seem the case anymore. And it's, it's madness all year round. But hey ho, here we go then. So I'm going to just let you know that we did have a meeting of the All Wales Medicine Strategy Group in July. And following that meeting, advice on two medicines was forwarded to Welsh Government for ratification. Now, one of those medicines uh, was the Starlimab. And you might have seen on the news recently that a mum from Port Talbot was given the all clear from cancer after becoming the first person in Wales to be prescribed this treatment. Uh, and it targets a specific variant of colorectal cancer. So Wales is the first UK nation to offer this as standard treatment for all eligible patients and is joint first with Italy in the world. So I'd like to thank the One Wales team who worked with Dr. Craig Barrington in Swansea to pull the evidence together, which enabled the One Wales Medicines Advisory Group to make a positive recommendation on this medicine. And that recommendation was endorsed by AWMSG in July and then ratified by Welsh Government. So this is a remarkable story to start um, off with. And it's such a privilege for us within AWTTC to have an involvement in making this medicine available and helping to improve health outcomes for people living in Wales. So AWMSG hosted its annual best practice day in July on the 13th. And again, this is a hugely important date in our calendar because it provides a forum for all health boards across Wales to come together and showcase the work which has had a big impact locally in helping to improve prescribing practice in, in each of the areas. So to give you some examples, Swansea Bay UHB focused on analgesic prescribing um, and also they covered the healthcare professional um, information on polypharmacy for older people. So that document um, was well received when um, I know Jessica tweeted that it went um, out and was picked up by um, a hospital in Madrid and they actually retweeted it. So it's great that the guidance is getting out there internationally. Um, so Betsy talked about the development of dental antimicrobial stewardship and there was somebody from Community Pharmacy who talked about their response to the surge in strep A deaths. Um, and you'll be aware that that hit the headlines back in the summer. So there were other very interesting presentations during the morning and then in the afternoon, all the health boards ran an interactive session. So there were breakout sessions and then all the delegates chose which they wanted to attend. Um, the feedback we received from this was excellent and, and everyone said that they thought it was worthwhile attending. It seemed that they all learned something uh, and there was lots of information then for them to take back to base. So these presentations will all be uploaded to the website soon. Um, and I'd like to give a special mention then to Claire Thomas, who took over from our colleague Kath Haynes, who retired back in February. Um, so Claire now heads up um, the WAPSU and also takes the role for medicines optimization within our organization. And a big shout out to Anne and Laura in my admin team for their fantastic organizational skills, because this is a difficult um, conference to put on. So another piece of work going on is the development of the, the new four-year medicine strategy. And Tom and Steph are heavily involved in this, and, and they'll tell you more about this later in the meeting. It's been a busy time for consultations and a number of these have gone out over the summer. So as a member of PAPIC, you'll have been invited to comment 
all the consultation responses are collated by the admin team um, and then they go back to the project teams who then feed all the comments back to the always prescribing advisory group for further consideration and discussion. The documents then are updated and then go back to ORPAG for sign off before they're all then taken to AWMSG for endorsement. So there's been a lot of activity going on in the background and you'll be able to refer to the website consultation page if you want more details on these. We were also delighted to publish our first easy read patient information leaflet on the prescribing of tramadol, um, which was issued in July. So you heard at the last PAPIG meeting how my colleagues um, worked with Learning Disability Wales to produce this document. Um, we hope this is gonna be the first of many we're developing skills in-house to ensure that our team learn how to make patient information easier to understand and that we're inclusive in our work. So I think you've probably heard enough of my voice. So I need to refer to you to the AWTTC quarterly newsletter, which is available on our website in English and in Welsh. And you can also sign up to receive it by email. The newsletter will capture all the activity from the different sections of AWTTC, including the Yellow Card Centre and Poisons. Um, talking of YCC, I'm off in a minute to go and get my COVID vaccination and my flu jab. Um, as, as a Cardiff and Vale employee, we're, we're all um, encouraged to go and get um, our vaccinations and make sure they're up to date. But if I do get any adverse reactions, you can be sure I'll be filling in a yellow card and flying the flag for YCC Wales. <laughs> so anyway, I've given you a little taster now of everything that's been going on. Thank you for listening and thank you for taking